The Black Death, also known as the Black Plague, is popular for being one of the most devastating plagues to ever hit mankind. The total death count is unclear, but it's estimated to have taken between 75 to 200 million lives, roughly 30 to 60 percent of the population at the time. The pandemic was mostly concentrated in Eurasia, while predominantly having a larger effect on Europe between 1346 to 1353. To put that into perspective, if the Black Plague were to hit us today with the same mortality rate, it would wipe out around 3.4 billion people. However, that kind of statistic would be highly unlikely given our progression in medicine and modern technology. Of course, there could be some kind of variant of the disease that could make it a little harder to combat, but that is perhaps a topic for another video. There are several theories out there discussing what exactly the Black Death was, and where it originated. Analysis of DNA from people in Southern and Northern Europe indicate that the pathogen responsible was the Yersinia pestis bacterium, resulting in several forms of the plague, including the bubonic plague. The mechanism by which Yersinia pestis bacterium was transmitted was established in 1898 and was found to involve the bites of fleas, whose midguts had become obstructed by replicating pestis bacterium several days after feeding on an infected host, most commonly a form of rodent. This blockage results in starvation and the aggressive feeding behavior by the fleas, which would repeatedly attempt to clear their blockage by regurgitation, resulting in thousands of plague bacteria being flushed into the feeding site, infecting the host. Once this bacterium has been contracted, it becomes extremely hard for the host body's immune system to detect. One of the molecules in its outer membrane, called lipopolysaccharide, is a dead giveaway for the immune system. However, the bacterium is able to modify the structure of this molecule so that it no longer alerts the immune system. The plague then directly starts attacking your immune system and their outpost, the lymph nodes. Essentially, this is where the bacterium lives and conducts all its havoc. It eventually starts ripping apart the body's hemoglobin in its pursuit of iron and brings it back to its cozy little habitat inside the lymph nodes. The body finally figures out that there is something funky going on inside of the immune system, which in turn triggers the body's self-destruct mode, for lack of a better term. The lymph node swells, creating these gross, juicy little buggers known as buboes, the essential trademark of the bubonic plague. As the disease progresses, the bacteria decides it's had enough terrorizing just your immune system and spreads to your lungs and other areas of your body. Via the ultimate transit, your body has to offer your blood. The presence of so much bacteria in the bloodstream will eventually result in a condition called septic shock. Your blood vessels begin to leak inside your body, decreasing the blood volume. This in turn leads to your blood pressure decreasing, resulting in impaired blood flow to cells, tissues, and organs. What happens afterwards is the inevitable. Multiple organ failure and eventually, death. Most victims died two to seven days after initial infection. This is in no way a painless death. You will be hot, sweaty, and just have an overall feeling of apathy. You can also expect to experience a 100 to 106 degree fever, headaches, painful aching joints, nausea, and vomiting. Just think about your common flu and then multiply that by a thousand and you can begin to get a taste of how it feels to have the Black Death inside of you. This doesn't even bring into account how it felt for loved ones to have to abandon sick family members as a result of the fear and overall likelihood that they would contract a deadly bacteria as well. The psychological impact of the bacteria is as extensive and brutal as the physical side of it. However, I will not get into that. Let's just say that it was truly a devastating time to be alive in these specific regions. We should just be thankful that we don't have to experience it, only learn from it.